Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over the five college basketball games for Thursday, December 7th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, include my $19 Bank Shop best bet, as well as my all-access season pass at College Hoops. You can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Thursday in college basketball. First up, we see Eastern Kentucky taking on UNC Greensboro. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Got to mention, you know, there's only five games in total in college basketball for Thursday. One of the smallest cards of the season. I'll certainly be treading lightly. I figured why not just go over all five games here on the breakdown, even though some of these games certainly not my favorite games on the board. But in this matchup, I do think, you know, I think Greensboro is the much better team here. But I also think that they match up really well with EKU. You know, Greensboro, they're a great three-point shooting team. They're 64th in the country in three-point shooting, shooting the ball right around 37% from the perimeter. EKU is the second-worst three-point defense right now in Division I college hoops, giving up just under 44% to their opponents. That's a big problem against these Spartans. And also, uh, UNC Greensboro does a really good job of taking care of the basketball. They're sixth in the country in turnover percentage offensively. Eastern Kentucky's defense has not been forcing a lot of turnovers, so not only should you know Greensboro be able to take care of the ball in this game, they should be getting really good looks in this one, a lot of three-point opportunities, and should be able to score the ball almost at will in a matchup like this. And while I do think Eastern Kentucky's offense is undervalued right now, you know they're they're creating pretty good looks. They're a good offensive rebounding team. They take care of the ball, and just plainly, they're just, their shooting numbers aren't great. I still don't think that their offense is good enough or undervalued enough for me to take a chance with them in a game like this. I guess I would lean towards the over if I was looking at a total, but I also think Greensboro takes care of business, wins this game, and covers the numbers. So give me the Spartans. I'll lay the points. Next up, the game of the night for sure for Thursday's card in college basketball, Iowa and Iowa State, big-time rivalry. This one's going to be 7.30. Eastern's going to be on ESPNU. Now, Iowa, we faded them in their last game against Purdue. And they lost that game 87-68. to 68. The defense, the problems there were noticeable in a game like that, especially on the road. Purdue was able to score at will. And I think Purdue was up by as many as 30, maybe 35 points in that game at one point. It was ugly. You know, Iowa dressed up a little bit towards the end. But, you know, not good. Not good if you're, if you're the Hawkeyes now on your second straight road game against another solid team like Iowa State who is, you know, very strong defensively, 10th in the country in just a defensive efficiency. But also, I think their offense is undervalued, underrated. Uh, the team is creating really good looks, you know, great opportunities shooting the ball. Their shooting numbers aren't the best to start the season, but they're still top 60 in effective field goal percentage. They take care of the basketball. They get to the free throw line. They're a very good rebounding team, both offensive and defensive, top 30 in the country. And I think Iowa State matches up pretty well here with the, with their rivals, especially as the home team should be a big home court advantage. And, you know, Iowa State struggled a bit in those neutral site games. They lost to Virginia Tech and Texas A&M, but they're battle tested. I like them at home here. So give me the Cyclones. I'm going to lay the points against Iowa. Next up, we see Little Rock and Central Arkansas. This one's going to be 7.30 Eastern on ESPN+. You know, Central Arkansas, give them credit for scheduling a really tough non-conference schedule. A lot of true road games. You know, not necessarily the opponents are tough, but they played a lot of road games. They played at Tulsa, at Vanderbilt, Southeast Missouri State, Kansas State, Loyola Marymount, and Hawaii. Basically, all over the country, Central Arkansas has been this season. But, you know, like I said, only one top 100 opponent. That was Kansas State, and that was a 100-56 blowout loss for the Bears in that ball game. Now, on the other side, Little Rock on a three-game win streak. All three of those wins, though, were on at home. They beat Tulsa, Ball State, and Arkansas State. Some decent teams in that mix. When we've seen them on the road, they haven't played too well. Double-digit losses to Illinois, Chicago, and Georgia State. They also have a neutral site loss, 98-93 to to Northern Illinois. They played a pretty decent schedule for a team like Little Rock. I do think Little Rock, the offense for them, is the best unit on the court for either of these teams in this ballgame. It should be able to score at will against one of the weaker defenses in college basketball. Central Arkansas ranked 353rd in adjusted defensive efficiency. So Little Rock, I do expect them to score a lot of points. The question is, can Central Arkansas keep up? I think they could. I mean, Little Rock's defense, 312th in the country in just a defensive efficiency. Not a very good defensive rebounding team. They take quite a few fouls. Not a good two-point defense. And if Central Arkansas's offense gets going, it would be in a game like this at home against, you know, a feasible opponent. So I like the over in this game. I think with both of these teams playing at a faster pace, you know, Little Rock 65th in average possession length offensively. Uh, Central Arkansas not too far behind. I think we see a lot of possessions in this game. Some pretty bad defense. I think we get over the numbers. So give me the over in Central Arkansas Little Rock. Next up, we see IUPUI, or as Mitch likes to call them, Iwapui against Eastern Illinois. This one's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN+. 
Now, Eastern Illinois, IUPUI, two teams ranked outside the top 300 right now in college basketball. I do think Eastern Illinois has played the much tougher schedule. When you look at their games, they've only had three home games this year, and all those games were against subdivision teams. But when they've been on the road, they've played teams like Illinois, they played Loyola Chicago, they played Kansas, and they actually were pretty competitive in that game against Kansas. They only lost that game by eight points, 71-63. to 63. They were catching a ton of points in that game, so obviously covered the number with ease. And, you know, I, th I do think Eastern Illinois is the better team in this matchup. IUPUI, they've been better this year than we've seen the last couple of seasons. You know, this team and program has gone through really rough rebuilding years the last couple of years. But already three wins on the season. They only had five wins all last year. So they're making improvements. They beat Valparaiso on the road, which is a nice win by 10 points, 66-56. But overall, this is still a team I think is a few years away from really competing in the Horizon League. And on the road, I don't love their chances against an EIU team. It doesn't get too many chances at home to beat Division One opponents. I think they take advantage of that. Give me Eastern Illinois. Not my favorite game on the board. Like I said, not my favorite card. But I'll lay the points with the Panthers. Next up, we see the final game for Thursday's card in college basketball. Portland and North Dakota State. This one's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern as well. North Dakota State, we backed them in their last game against San Jose State. That was a nice outright W in overtime, 83-78. to It was a close game. I mean, North Dakota State, they didn't have to make it that difficult. They were up by 16 points in the first half. They blew that lead. I think they were losing towards the end in the second half of that game. They go to overtime. They find the W for us. And, you know, one could worry about a letdown spot after that exciting victory. And, you know, Portland is playing with revenge in this ball game after they lost to North Dakota State last year. But I do think North Dakota State is the better team. And while I really like this Portland team, honestly, on paper, I think offensively a very talented team. The way that they play really worries me in true road games. You know, Portland, not a very good defensive team. They're 262nd in adjusted defensive efficiency. They don't force many turnovers. They're also a really bad three-point defense, 327th in the country. North Dakota State, a very good three-point shooting team. We saw that against San Jose State in the rematch, and now they're 19th in the country in three-point shooting. So Portland, I do think, could be in trouble defensively. And also, while Portland's talented offensively, pretty good shooting team, they get to the free-throw line, they also turn the ball over way too many times. That's a worry on the road. You know, again, even though North Dakota State's no defensive juggernaut, if you're turning the ball over over 21% of the time, I do worry about you on the road. North Dakota State played really well against Portland last season. That was actually a road game for the Bison. They won that game outright 67-62. to And in that game, they shot 41% from three. We could see similar numbers here with how bad Portland's been against a three this season. I like North Dakota State in this ball game. I'm going to take them and lay the points to end the night. And that's it. Those are the games for Thursday in College Hoops. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Rod Manelli. Good luck.